Good morning and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. We continue our study of the Holy Spirit and looking at the, the ministries of the Holy Spirit and as He uh, provides these gifts uh, to the believers. Uh, we talked about the, everybody gets at least one gift when you get saved. And uh, the gifts vary and we're just getting ready to talk about the nature of those uh, spiritual gifts on our last session. And we talked about, the, I have a list here of about 18 of them and uh, some think you're maybe like 17 and some think maybe like 19 and varies a little bit one way or the other but we'll just go with these and uh, these basic ones here that we have and there's there's two different kinds we've got the sign gifts and those are the the passing gifts those gifts that were for a period of time and then they they passed away because that's the passing gifts and then the other is the stewardship gifts and that's the permanent gifts and that's what we believe that the holy spirit gives to us to build the body to make the body of christ complete here on earth so i'll just read these off to you and then <clears throat> uh we probably maybe get one or two of them here today but uh uh we're gonna i'm gonna go through each one of them for you so uh, uh you might uh before we uh, start into that uh, next session especially i uh, have a pencil and paper and you might want to write down uh, the gift and the, the references that I give you, I'm not going to look up all the verses that go with each one because that would be real time consuming. But uh, I'll give you some references. So when I talk about things like the first one, here's apostleship, I'll give you some scriptures you can look at and uh, look it up later on and, and uh, agree or disagree with what I'm saying. But we're trying to stick to, the script, <coughs> stick to the scriptures. So let's see what they were. So the sign gifts, those passing gifts, those that were for a period of time and they're no longer here. We see the apostleship. That was the first one. We see prophecy. We see miracles, uh, and we talk about miracles again. It's not that miracles don't happen. I don't, I'm not saying that. So we'll get into that more in depth when we get to that uh, gift, healing, uh, tongues, interpretation of tongues, knowledge. So we see those are the seven of the passing gifts. Those are seven gifts we're going to talk about a little bit more in that context here in a moment. And then we go to the stewardship gifts, those permanent gifts, those gifts uh, that the Spirit gives to build uh, the church today. Wisdom, discernment of spirits, giving, exhortation, ministering, mercy showing, ruling or administration. Uh, we look at uh, treasures and secretaries, people in that area, uh, those that take care of our, our finances. Uh, those would be the, the ruling or the administration of uh, faith, teaching evangelism last of all is pastor teacher so uh, some people might have the idea well why why are some of these not for today uh, you say that they're passed away that they're not for today and that some are out why how can you say that because uh, uh we just read the scripture jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever so we see that it talks about christ being consistent and we know over in ephesians chapter 4 uh, Christ gave us spiritual gifts, gave us all the gifts, so how can we say some are good for then and not for now and vice versa? And so, um, as uh, Dr. Wilmington points out, he says sometimes we need to be careful and, and distinguish between God's person and God's program. Uh, God's person never changes. Uh, God, uh, his, he's omniscient, omnipresent, you know, omnipotent, he's uh, immutable, all those things about God. God hates sin. It's an abomination to him. God is consistent. Okay, God never changes, but his program has changed. The way he revealed himself and the way he worked in mankind through the years. Uh, we can go back to the days in the Old Testament uh, when we had the tabernacle and the temple and they would bring in their sacrifices. Uh, we're, we're not required to bring in sac blood sacrifices anymore. Uh, we can, that's a whole other way we can go with the study, but the idea is we're not required to do those things of the temple worship that they had back in the Old Testament. We're not uh, and required to do that today. Um, there's things that he did in the Old Testament. Remember when Sarah got pregnant at 90 years old? Uh, that's, that, that don't happen today. Uh, you know, those aren't the things that we do, that he does. That he's working in a different way. I remember Hezekiah, or Hezekiah, the uh, King Hezekiah, and uh, he got sick. And Isaiah came to him, and said that you know, Hezekiah, get your house in order. You're going to die. And how uh, Hezekiah cried out to God, and he prayed and cried out to God, and God said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 15 more years. Well. God can give 15 more years, but it's not like it was back then. You can't claim, well, because God did it for Hezekiah, he can do it for me. No. So we see God's person never changed, but God's program does change in the way he's revealed himself. So as we look at these things, we see, uh, so 
if I was to just come up, if I would have been living back in that day and time, say, and and uh, I would come up and say, well, you know, God said that, that uh, this should happen, or or we should do this, and and uh, I'm going to perform this miracle. Uh, that would be an indication of my power, wouldn't it? If I can do something, that's uh, perform some kind of a miracle, do something out of the extraordinary. Uh, if I say I'm going to do it and I do it, that would prove some genuineness to my ministry, to my what I'm saying. And so I, I have here in, the, in my book, I got uh, three different cases as we see in the ministry of Jesus. I'm going to give you three different verses. We're going to look at the portions of Scripture. It says, as we've seen in the ministry of Jesus, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, I, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So what are we saying there? Uh, Nicodemus recognized, hey, yeah, God has to be at work in you or you couldn't do those miracles. So that's, that helped to validate who Christ was. So we get a little bit further, and we see in Matthew chapter 10, he says, And when he had called on him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. And as ye go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Uh, freely ye have received, freely give. So we see then he gave his disciples, said, Here's, here's, what you want, I want you to do, and here's the power that I'm giving you to do it. So we see that those uh, things that they could do then to validate who they were, that they were the disciples of Christ. Then we go ahead a little bit further, and uh, we see that in John chapter 20, and I think this is a real good verse to help explain what we're talking about. In chapter 20, verses 30 to 31, it says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. John said, hey, I could have wrote volumes about this, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. He said, I recorded these miracles that you see what Jesus did. You might believe that he's the Son of God and you might have eternal life through his name. So we see that as Christ did those miracles, it helped to, to show and to validate who he was, that he was truly sent from God. As we see Nicodemus recognized that back over in John chapter 3. He says, no, no one could do it. If God hadn't sent you and wasn't working in you and through you, no man can do that. So we see it then in Paul's ministry here. He says, uh, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. That's in 2 Corinthians 12, 12. So we see Paul's talking about here, he said, The signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. So Paul says, this is, this is a validation. See, I've done these things, we've done these things. This is our proof that we are in the ministry of the other apostles. Uh, over in Hebrews 2, 4. God also bearing them witness with both signs and wonders and with divers, different kinds of miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His will. So we see the, the ministry of the apostles. God gave them the ability to do these things. He, it was a temporary thing. The sign gifts were given primarily to validate the authority of the Savior and His apostles prior to the writing of the New Testament. He goes on to say afterward, this miraculous proof was no longer needed for what we have the scriptures themselves. We have the scriptures today. They didn't have them back then. So that miraculous proof is no longer needed. They reveal true from false. I take the scripture and measure what somebody is saying and somebody, what they're doing. Measure it against the scripture and see if it's true or false. And we have to have that discerning spirit. We have to understand. That's why it's so important. You get into the word of God and study it. We, listen, we, we live in a, in a world today, and I want to just uh, kind of share this with you, but there, there's a lot of distortion uh, going on in the churches, in the preaching and teaching of the Bible. There's a lot of distortion, a lot of false teaching. Uh, let's look at a portion of Scripture over here in, in 2 Timothy 3, 15 and 16. He says uh, that we see that um, all Scripture is given by inspiration. God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. All Scripture. You need to know the Bible. All right, you need to get in and study the Bible. You need to get in there and dig it out so you can tell the truth from the false. We don't need those those sign miracles uh, back in those days, those, those gifts. We don't need that today because we have the Bible. We have the Word of God. Look what we have today, okay? I have within me, and we've studied this already, I have within me the Holy Spirit of God, right? So I'm indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. 
I am dwelled by the Holy Spirit of God, and I have the written Word of God. And we know that the, the Bible is without error, it's inerrant, it's accurate, it's, there's no contradiction. So I know I have God's Word and I have God's Spirit. And between those two, I can get into the Word of God and I can study the Word of God and the Holy Spirit will reveal it to me. And listen, uh, you teaching, God gives the teach, uh, gift of teaching. We talked about that back over the pastor teacher or the teaching. God gives teachers, so you're not going to get everything out of it because you don't have the time or the resources. But teachers and pastor teachers have the, have the commentaries, have other sources they can go and they can study and help you understand. So don't get all frustrated if you read a portion of Scripture and you can't understand it right away. Don't get all frustrated, Steve. Study it. Talk to others. Talk to your church, your pastors, your teachers, and help. they'll help you see and understand. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time, Lord. We just pray you'd be with us as we continue to study about the spiritual gifts. Open our hearts, open our minds to you, Lord, and through your word and your spirit. We pray that we'll be able to discern uh, what really is true and what's not. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for taking care of us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.